is Alex Porcelli. And as you can see, I'm not Chris, the project lead of BPM Suite. Um, I'm part of the team. I'm a principal software engineer working mostly on the business central, the, the workbench as a whole. So I will give this talk um, for Chris. So uh, we may have a slightly different um, approach, as I'm not Chris again. Um, but uh, talking to Chris, the most things that I present to you, it was the original plan to show. That's basically how you evolve your um, process-driven application from inside our world of business central or how you can extend it and, or reuse from your own applications or infrastructure. So this is the overview. Uh, I will give you a really brief overview, uh, an intro to BPM suite. It's gonna be really quick. And then we talk a bit about process-driven uh, application. This is gonna be the main part of the talk. I'll give you some live demos, how to operate and how to use um, business central to develop and evolve your applications, your business driven applications, and talk a bit about roadmap, what is coming. Um, quick intro to GBPM. So basically, we're talking is the business central, the BPM suit, gives you um, all the features that you need to build a business driven application. That's basically you can create your business process. So it's the altering side, but alongside the altering, we also provide in the business central the execution environment so you can run your process from within uh, the business central and you can monitor uh, this execution. And then this is gonna be an iterative process. Uh, this is the idea of the business automation. Once you get the definitions, you can measure that and see how you can evolve so how you can improve. And uh, we provide this on the business uh, central, basically. Um, and why is that basically you have, in terms of the application, you have more visibility once you have a predefined and clear uh, process of the application, you see how things go and where it's stuck, and where, so you have all the features from within the platform. Uh, in terms of the, the life cycle that you're talking about, the altering uh, execution and uh, monitoring, uh, those are the aspects that we provide in terms of altering. If you look the, the business center in the altering perspective, it's roughly a cloud ID, so you can basically create everything from within. You don't need to leave the business uh, central so we provide the ways that you can build your uh, business process with the BPM and editor. You can define your data models. That's Java uh, POJOs that we may call the forms, the rules, configurations, everything from within this platform. Um, the web-based uh, gives you, this business central gives you the richness of a back uh, Git repository so everything that you do is version. You have the ability to query the version, see what happens, and see how you evolve in the history of your projects. And uh, one rich feature of this platform of the web-based UI that you present is that you can create, you, you have several editors. So you don't have a messy environment. You have specific editors for each type of artifact that you are uh, working on. So you have a specific rules editor, you have a specific design editor, you have a specific forms editor. And everything put in together in the business central. We also have and provide the Eclipse IDE uh, functionality. And uh, as I mentioned, this, the business central, the web-based interface has the Git backend. So in your life cycle development, if you are, have a developer that's getting used to work just on Eclipse, you can clone the Git repository and work on your uh, preferred IDE. 
So you have this comfortable environment that you can go to web or choose and go to your ID. Um, and you cannot just work, but you can send it back to your workbench, to Business Central, as you have still have the, the Git backend available. So this is very powerful, and you can do different things. And from within this platform, you can always deploy from them. Make it available. This is the uh, uh, technical thing. From the um, execution side, what it provides is an embeddable and lightweight um, uh, core engine. I think this is one th the strange points of um, strange points that we have in the BPM engine is really lightweight and embeddable and really efficient in the end, really powerful, giving so many customers, so many users out there ability to do most of what they need without much issues. We provide some task services that basically you can create ad hoc tasks that what we call human tasks, you can do whatever you want um, without defining um, um, a process before. You can do these human tasks. You, can, you have APIs for everything, local and remote. We have a pretty solid REST API that you can um, communicate. And part of the demo that I do is show that you can use the REST API that we provide from the thing platform. You can query and do your own stuff in a very configurable way. And you have all the process management functionality from within um, web. Um, in terms of uh, monitoring, we have plan, uh, a lot of audit information. Uh, when you explore the business um, process running, the process index, you have all the history, you have all the audit information available that you can see in the screen, on the web UI, or you, all this information are uh, also available through APIs. You can always use APIs to get access to other things. And we also have Dash Builder. That's basically some uh, reports, technical reports at this point, out of the box, that you see how many process instance, what's the type of instance, everything that is running or were, were running, and you can see uh, out of the box. We also provide the ability to you, as a user, define your own reports on the Dash Builder. So, process driven application. Um, as you said, JBPM has all this offer in terms of tooling to define, manage, and monitoring. Um, can be integrated into custom applications and can be embedded or provided as a service, depending on your use case. And the idea of Workbench that we are talking here, the Business Central, is it provides out of the box. Not all the applications um, can use it as is. So this is depending on case by case. We have case that people are using the plain UI that we provide, the simple uh, UI that provides a generic, called generic UI out of the box, but uh, you can do yourself as well, so you can create your own UI and use the API. Um, let's go to the, the demo. So I have here, um, right, installation, installed here in my machine, the Business Central 6.1.1 that should be available already in the portal that you can use today. Have it up, running. Let's explore a bit um, this generic EJ. Oh, sorry. Okay, this is the Business Central interface. When you log it in, you have um, this welcome screen, but you have here on top all the functionalities around the um, BPMS suite. So let's start by exploring the authoring side. When you start a new project, you, you 
start some drawing the, the business. Let's start by that. Let's point this functionality. Um, let's, for the purpose of this presentation, have a brand new empty repo. So I have something. Let's create a new repository. What I do here is create a new Git repository. Call it live demo. Associate the organization unit. And go to authoring. Use this specific repository. And this is the Git repository that you can get access to from the external, from your, your preferred IDE. Let's, let me close all these things and create a new project from here. Live demo. Um, from here, what I'm doing is create a new project. That's technically what it means. It's creating a Java Maven-based project. So I finished it here. It provides me the interface to create the project, to build the project and change the dependencies, all this. But what I explore to you is the ability from here, you start to create your assets, your elements. So let's start from, we're talking about BPM, so let's start from the process design. And you do the demo process. So we have here now the designer that we can start drag and drop some elements. Let's take a task, a human task here. Let's drop, um, for these, uh, I use some simple areas that you can create. Start from here. I say like welcome to a possible patient. Let's talk about someone that you go to the hospital to do some exams. So you go here, you have initial process to welcome the patient. Then you have some tasks of to do, some tasks. Let's start here. Let's connect the things here. You do one thing and do another, and you finish your, oh, your thing here. Basically, you do some blood pressure and initial blood test. From this point, I have the design side. So basically drawing things. You can start now evolve from this. Um, so you may start by just capturing the, the concept of the process and uh, hand off to someone uh, more technical in your team. So this is the business analyst could be working on this design thing and then hand off to a more technical uh, person that can start to find the, the details to make this model executable. So basically you come here to define the, the variables that you want. You create like here for, you just use the patient. And just call Java train string. Let's ask you for age. have pretty uh, simple thing and associate to welcome when you welcome this patient what you ask is for the name and the age of this patient you will define the what are your um, actions here on this particular one then let's see.
تعجب میکنم So basically what I'm doing is now define that this tax, the input for this tax you map to the process variable that I find in the process as a whole. I do it very quickly just to explore some other capabilities. So at this point it's pretty simple. I'm not to explain and expose the other one. We already have examples uh, more um, complete. What I do here is save my action. And uh, what is expected when I have a welcome to this patient, I have a form to fill. So I ask this designer to generate based on the information that we have, the forms. In this case, you're gonna generate one form. So I have here the business process that I just created, the file that I just created here. And now I can explore the task uh, form that will show up to, to users. I can custom um, like the label, ask for the age, and here to make it more clear, that's the name. Let's ask first the name and then thanks open the project editor. And at this point I have one simple process with one task. There are others, but one task that are defined with some inputs that is gonna ask for the patient name and patient um, age. And I have the form that you capture this information. It was completely auto-generated. I just uh, did some bits around that. I saved this process. I built it and it's built as successful. What it means when I build and deploy, it's available as a Maven artifact. From within now the platform, you can start process based on this defined process. process. You can start process instance based on the process that I just defined. We can now switch from the authoring. Now we are finished the authoring side. Let's move to the uh, deployment. See the, the process deployed. We see here the live demo that I just created. And uh, we go to now the process definition, that's the one available, and we can start from here. So what it asks is to show exactly the form that I just created, simple like that. So you can automate several uh, applications using this um, simple approach. I think the challenge. You have now uh, the information about the, the, the instance that I just uh, started, had the variables, values, um, possible attached documents, and all the audit log available um, in this side panel, right from here. And I can even check from here what's the model associated with this specific um, instance that I'm exploring. So I just start one and I see here that I am the first step. So basically, and I have here the process instance that is running. If I start a new one, let's just start one quickly. You have another process instance running. So you from here you can check all the instances available. Of course, I am using my user that is the administrator, can see everything. Depending on the roles that you have, you, you see different areas available of the business central. And uh, about and at this point, we are talking here about um, execution and how you can use it in your day by day. And in terms of um, monitoring, you still have this. Um, task dashboard that you see here that you have two uh, running process. You can go details. 
in this case, it's just me starting to process, don't have much information. But if you have this running across your company, several processes, you're gonna see everything out of the box prepared in this perspective. Um, so this is the general idea that you have. Let's explore other examples, not now, but a bit more rich. <sighs> what do we already have available? Mm. Let's see this process that we have, defined as an example here that you can use. You have the self-evaluation process. That's basically asking for you, you start a process that, ev that you evaluate yourself. Many companies have this process that you run once or twice a year or many, years, many times a year. You basically, you do the self-evaluation. Uh, uh, you have then human resource evaluation and the project management, project manager evaluation, then you finish basically that. You could continue from this and doing other process, but the, the, this process is quite simple. So let's start this and see a bit more the richness um, of the platform. Let me build and deploy. I started here, a really empty, so we didn't have much things uh, deployed or available. So now we start to have more process definition available. You have the, just the one that I created, the demo process. Now we have also the evaluation. This evaluation now, um, I can start a new process exactly as we did with the other one, the live demo. And what it asks us initially is the employee name. I use my own in annual review. What it does here, it starts the process. And this process is slightly different because it has the human interaction defined in the process definition. That's basically, it triggers for me and for managing human resources um, tasks to execute. So now you switch to the task uh, list and I can see for my inbox that I have one task to do. In my case, what I can do is to talk about my performance. Great job. And I finish this. Once I hit the button complete, what do you do is do to the next step of the process. The next step of the process is to have human resources and project manager doing the evaluation uh, of this person, in this case me. But for the demo purpose of this presentation, I have human resources and project management roles associated to my user. So when I complete here, in fact, show up two different uh, new tasks that I can pick. So, and uh, just to see now, if you go to the process instance, I have this evaluation, and then I can see in which stage of the process I am. So you have visibility for each instance of the process, you have the visibility in the, uh, back to the model. Um, you have all the process variables, you may have, and of course the logs, the audit logs. Let's back to my task list and execute it, claim, and do maybe a comment here. Yeah, he did. Whatever. I complete here, now the PM just completed. So at this point, if I go back to processes, I don't see the, that particular process running anymore, pro the process instance anymore once I'm finished. And uh, now we go back here to task dashboard and uh, we can see uh, a bit more valuable uh, information that we have more process running. Active two and we have the, the finished information and all these. Um, now, let's back to slides a bit and then return to the demo. So as I mentioned before, this is the out of box functionality that we provide, the generic uh, UI, the generic element that you can use today. Just download it, define your model, explore, and 
start using. But maybe, um, you see each case may be different. You may create some process that you want to start from within your portal, the, your company portal. You may want to start a process from um, your own custom UI. You want your logo, your, your own bits inside the platform or outside. So what we talk is um, that we provide all the functionality from within this platform that you can extend and customize almost everything. Um, we provide what we call custom, um, custom uh, some sensible workbench that you can create your own screens inside Business Central. And uh, you define your screens, your perspectives, and all the things and make it available in, inside the platform. Let's explore this a bit. So, for this, I go to the extensions and have this plugin management. And I can start creating my own screens or my own bits. Let's start creating a new screen. Let's call it, um, I already have here something, let's say case screen. Just before, let's go to evaluation. Imagine that I have a scenario that I want to do exactly the same evaluation, but I want my own uh, UI. Basically, I want to list all the available uh, process running. I want to start a process from the single uh, UI. Let's start with using AngularJS, a very popular JavaScript um, framework. And let me get the bits from here. Basically, in this area, I have the evaluation, a table of all the process instance running. This is the table here. And then I you have the main code. Basically, this is AngularJS code that's using here our REST API provided by Business Central. Let's expand it here a bit. That's basically asking for 880 Business Central history evaluation process using the parameters that we have in our REST API. And uh, basically for this particular screen, I will save it. Oh, I will give a name, a title for that as mandatory. This is my evaluation screen. So I created the first screen. And he, it is available here. We have in this left-hand side the list of every screen or every perspective, everything available in the platform. The ones that you cannot edit is because it's part of the platform, so you cannot change it today. We have plans to change it soon. So, and you can, the ones that you authored, you can go and open as expected. So, let's close it. Uh, we have the first screen, and now we will define a perspective. Perspective is a way that they can bring different pieces together. In this case, we start just with one screen that we just defined, but later we will uh, add more uh, screens to it. So let's create one perspective. Evol app. I call this Evol app. Um, and this is going to be related the the way that we are building the platform, that you can create your own apps from inside. This is just initial uh, uh, work on that. This should be evolved in the upcoming versions. And from here, what I would do is, I have a component here available that is a screen component. Then let me get the screen name. Make sure that, so I 
drop, drag and drop here, place the screen name here. I will assign a tag. Tag is a mechanism that we created for the current version that you can create different tags and the, when the tag matches the app directory, we provide that app directory now, it will display that app in that app directory. We're gonna see it in a few. So I save it. So I, at this point, have one screen defined in one evil app, uh, evil app uh, exposed. I close everything, I refresh the business central, and I go to the apps directory, and I have here the evil app. When I click it, it lists all the process instances of the evaluation. I don't have, let's start one. So let's back to our app. So now I have my process instance listed. But okay, that's fine to list all the, the things that I have, but I want to start creating new things from, from what's single. I want to all the list and start from here, a new process. Let's evolve. So I go back to the process, um, the plugin management and create a new screen. Let's call it, how it's called now, before, is new, evolve, whatever. And here, what I will do is a different approach. That's basically, I will start a process is now playing JavaScript using the thing that I have here. I'll still exactly the same. The only thing that I now I use external JavaScript and I upload this JavaScript, this basically goes and do the hard work for the forms integration because what I want to do is to use the forms integration. Let's use the one here. So I use this JavaScript that I just uploaded. I'm using Angular, no, no, Angular, but whatever. And let me get the template. This is gonna be really template, it's just uh, I read that I'll be able to add my form. I'll save here. And now I use this uh, start process screen, uh, new default. From my perspective that I already had, I add additional screen, oh, additional line here, with an additional screen and um, using the new Evo. I'll save it, refresh. Oh, something didn't work expected. Oh, the address here is not right. Save it again, close it, refresh. No warehouse, that's good. And back to evil. Oops, something didn't. should be, well, I don't know, it should be working. Um, I explore now another aspect of the platform, that is the case management. Today, Business Central doesn't give you the flexibility to have case management, 
We don't have a general UI for that. And I'll present you how you can do it using this configurable workbench. Um, I create a new screen, call it case management. I will reuse some code that I already have. I have one app deployed that communicates to um, Business Central that queries instance and query project, and I can start from here uh, and you list the existing elements of the case management. The one that we start to talk about uh, the blood and test exams. Um, I have the template here. Basically, I will list the available case, and you can see details from that. So the handler, case management, save. And your perspective, let me define it's my case. You can now, let me just use, copy and paste this, case management. Now it should be exposed. Let me set this is going to be in the home of the tag. Save, reload, and if not goes wrong, it should be available. My case. So okay, this works, and I can see all the available cases that is already deployed. I can see the details of each one each case available. Basically what I have for the case management, I have one process that I can, based on the results of this process that basically check if blood pressure, some act, actions, based on that I can take different actions like start new, uh, ask for new exams. I recommend new tasks like white blood cells, enzyme, save change, you're gonna be painting here, and uh, I go back to the list. So basically here what I'm doing is creating my own UI and expose that as an app. And this is one side of the thing, but you may get reuse every component, every single screen that we have, you can reuse everything from within your application. So I show you now how you can um, get one of these screens, let's get this case and reuse those from your application. Let's go back here, let's my case. We have an ability to do what we call uh, standalone mode. And I can give the perspective name as a parameter. In this case, it's gonna be my case that I just created this perspective. When I hit the button, what I do is to load the exact um, screen that I just defined, the perspective that I just defined. And this is can be not for custom ones. You can reuse like um, our process definition. You can go here in our, instead of my case, you can go for process definition. and you got all the process definitions from uh, within your application. So you can reuse mostly everything. In theory, you could reuse a form, something got wrong, I don't know exactly, but this is exactly the same concept. Um, you can even point to files available. We have that process definition of the evaluation pro uh, uh, process. Let's go back here. Go to evaluation. We have this one, this process evaluation. I can go here and get the URI, URI of this element, the Git. I can open directly from here. Path. And you now have the designer open, isolated from the rest of the business center. So this opens a huge 
uh, opportunity to anyone build their own applications and reusing our uh, bit without much effort. We have several cases that people are really using this in many different ways and really interesting ways. So, I think, let me back to the slides. It's basically what I had to talk to you. Oh, let's talk about a bit about roadmap. Um, we in the community are about to release the 6.3 um, final in August, around August, I'm not sure. Um, and what is expected um, to have in this release? We have the initial case management, for instance. We're gonna be a general UI for case management provided out of the box. We have uh, inside design, we implementing the data mapper that you can easily map uh, things. For the core engine, you have the async continuation. And uh, one thing that I've been asked a lot is JavaScript based script. So you can use JavaScript. The execution servers, we have in BRMS and BPMS the new execution server. That's basically a way that you have a execution server somewhere and you control those servers um, remotely from Workbench and you can always access those remote things. So we are uh, unifying them. So the rules, the key server for the rules, the decision server, and the GBPM, the BPM decision uh, are gonna be more um, unified. And we also have plans for cloud integration probably you're gonna be able to um, manage cloud deployment from OpenShift or uh, a tool like that from the past. Um, and uh, for WorkMate side, we plan to have the user group management is the other requirement that we have been asked for a, a while. So the main things in the BPM space for GBPM is gonna be the execution server plus cloud. It's gonna be big. Uh, we think, and uh, these applications in the case management. This is pretty much what we consider big for the product release that I, I, we can, we work on the community, so we, do, we cannot define the, the, the estimated time to get it available in the product. Um, that's gonna be the BPM suite 6.260 GA. So that's basically that, that I want to show today. So questions? Um, just the EAP, BRMS, uh, BPMS is a superset of BPMS, uh, BRMS. So you already have the, the, the things there. You don't need to use, but it's basically EAP. We run on top of EAP. No, no. Oh, um, Mark Proctor Platform Octet. Hmm? Okay. Important. Another important uh, thing that we bring to the workbench is the Dash Builder that we have today. It's completely rewritten and um, integrated the platform. So you'll be able to drag and drop, the, the exactly way that I drag and drop and create a screen, you'll be able to create your dash builders exactly the same way using the, this kind of richness. This is expected to have soon too. Anything else more? We have the blog, yeah. Check our blog, we have.
Um, yeah. Um, today, you, uh, I think in six one we already have the ability to put the logo, and everything is based on Bootstrap. You can upgrade the, the theme. Today, it's Bootstrap two, the technology that we use to do all the, the theme around the, the colors and everything. It's Bootstrap two. We are moving to Bootstrap three and adopting Patternfly. That's the Red Hat branding um, with more integrated branding. The modern EAP like console you have, we would have a similar UI. So we are moving to that direction and you be able to customize the UI using the Bootstrap 3 um, framework. So it's basically a theme that you can overwrite. Yes? Uh, good question, how it goes with the security when you embed your star, uh, embed our tools within your application. What is, has happening these days, everyone that is doing that has a single sign-on solution implemented in the company. So, and uh, because business, uh, B business central goes to the container authentication, it's basically transparent for the business central. So if you have the single sign-on setup in your EAP, on your platform, you're gonna be transparent. If you don't, you have to change some bits in, get, in order to get it. Sorry, I didn't get Yes, definitely. You can build your own application with just our REST APIs. I, for this demo purpose, I use the platform because, well, it's part of our work, build the platform. And, but you can do, you have all the REST APIs defined, you can use and build your own. Actually, we have lots of customers using exactly that approach. They create their own UI, their own uh, application, running on their own application server, whatever, and they just use the REST API to communicate, get information, and display. It's very possible. I, I listed that uh, list of instance was just the, the REST call. Mm. Yeah, well, this integrated the platform, but you can reuse the, everything using iframes. From, in your application, I mean. Your You have to tweak some APIs to do that. You have to show from within BPM, you have to somehow to bring your information to our database. I would say that it would be safe to use our APIs to do that, to basically replicate the data to our staff, and so you have all the information from within the, the, the business central. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see the, this point. For the part that you cannot use here that you have already in place, you'd bring your data using, like, migrating, not migrate, but you replicate the data using our APIs. And for the other parts, you can use basically our tooling to build your stuff. So you have everything in a central uh, place to see how it goes for monitoring information, things like that. Yes, they can work together. Ooh. Well, we have a specific area that is integrations. Uh, we have a 
even in the community, we have the repository for integration that will have integration with multiple things. And one big thing in terms of integration is Camel. You can get access to and from Camel. We have uh, exporting our REST APIs to Camel, and they can, can communicate pretty well. So if you have Fuse running, you can access uh, JBPM, um, the BPM suite APIs to the REST and using that perfectly. Any other questions? So thank you very much for your time. I'll be around if you have any questions. Thank you.